good morning learners fresh morning sunday and we are going to start continue with our lecture that is morphology of flowering plants right till now we have discussed what do we what did we discuss in this chapter till now we have talked about calyx we have already talked about corolla right and we have talk, or i will say we have talked about the four worlds and uh then we talked about the brackets and forms of calyx and corolla so before i talk about the remaining two worlds what are the remaining two worlds uh in this chapter we have to talk about androsium as well as gynosium in complete detail so before that i am going to take a uh, estimation with you that is the uh, arrangement if simple language mein hum baat kare what is estivation estivation is how sepals are arranged in whorl manner or you can say how petals they are uh, it can be sepals it can be we are going to talk about petals so both of them any one of them can be there that how sepals or petals they can be arranged in whorl manner in a bud condition that arrangement is known as estivation so you can say that arrangement of sepals or petals in bud condition it is known as estivation so this is the definition of estivation which should be clear in our mind that what are we going to talk about in estivation we are not taking any other world we only talk about the arrangement of sepals or petals now depending on their arrangement they are of four types estivation is of four types velvet twisted imbricate and vexillary estivation in velvet estivation the margins of sepals and petals in a whorls they just touch each other there is no overlapping as you can see there is no overlapping at all of the margins so margins of sepals of velvet estivation in which the margins they are touching each other there is no overlapping of the margin this is called velvet estivation and it is a special characteristics of brassica family and cruciferi family if you have seen this ug plant then and is a very common feature or in the callotropis you can found velvet estivation or you can find them in the mustard plant that is the brassica plant and cruciferi family members the next type of estivation is twisted estivation what is the speciality of twisted estivation as you can see one in and other margin is out one margin is in and other is out that is the characteristic of this kind of estivation here one margin is in overlap and other margin is out overlaps so one margin is in other margin is out this kind of estivation is known as twisted estivation it is a characteristic feature of malvesi family china rose as well as you can find them in okra bindi as well as in the cotton plant gossypium so velvet is a characteristic feature of mustard in which margins they are just touching each other in twisting one side in other side out one side in other side out so here we have drawn five petals 1 2 3 4 5 and one side is in other one is out last one is imbricate imbricate is of two types ascending and descending descending imbricate is also known as vexillary estivation if you recall in the papilionaceous family in the pea plant we have talked about this uh, vexillary estivation what is so special about the vexillary estivation that one one uh, petal is your standard it is known as standard and other two 
they are in and out and these two in and out that is known as wings and fourth and fifth they are fused and they are known as keels so we have total five no doubt there is one two three four five petals out of which one is standard two wings and one is keel this kind of estivation is known as descending imbricate or vexillary estivation which is characteristic feature of pea plant ascending imbricate in this one is completely in one sepal is as you can see i have made it making it semi circular right one sepal is completely in and one sepal is completely out that is one thing now how many are left three so these three are like in and out out and in and that last one is same in and out so if now always remember that if you are asked about ascending imbricate then anterior side will be always out this side of the sepal will be anterior side it will be always out and rest of them in any one can be in any one can be in and out but yes ascending one is uh, um, anterior side is always out if you are asked about simple imbricate activation then any sepal can be in any sepal can be out any three can you can draw in and out but if you are specifically asked about the ascending imbricate specifically there is a mentioning they have mentioned the word anti uh, ascending then you will draw this anterior sepal anterior side sepal always completely out and then rest of them you can mark like this this can be in and out type condition and now there can be again completely in right so then there can be in and out so you can draw like this and one more will be there total you have to draw five so any one can do draw in any one can you draw in and out only three can be in and out but it is only in the simple imbricate if you are specifically asked about ascending then you have to take care of this interior side it has to be out so valvate estivation margins are uh, touching each other twisted one in one out imbricate ascending and descending descending is known as vexillary in which one is standard two are wings and the last two they are fused and they are known as keels now the let's move on to our third world which is known as male world and it is known as androecium and single member of this uh, world is known as stamen and each stamen has how many parts we have done this before how many parts each stamen has it has two parts as you can see one is the swollen portion and this swollen portion is known as anther and then there is a long thread like structure this long thread like structure is known as filament right so every stamen has two parts one is swollen part which is called anther and other thread like structure is known as filament so this is the most common anther which is observed in the maximum of the flowers and this is called bilobed anther if you look at the lobe this is two lobes so this is known as bilobed anther and or it is known as dithica dithicus means two lobed but there is one exception in the malvesi family in the china rose anther is monolobed it is having only one lobe and this is known as monolobed 
थी कज अदरवाइज मैक्सिमम मेजोरिटी ऑफ द फ्लावर्स दे हैव बाई लोब्ड एंथर नाउ इफ यू लुक वेरी केयरफुली दीज आर द टू लोब्स we draw always and this lobe is connected in the center by a tissue which is known as connective it is known as connective and it is a sterile tissue to which two lobes are attached right this is a sterile tissue and there is a one another line which is given in our ncert sterile stamen is known as stemi node it is known as stemi node now stamen because it has two parts there is always not the stamen is free sometime in few plants free stamen on there and for sometimes few stamen they are observed free stamen means when stamens they remain free from one another and also from the other worlds that condition is known as polyandrous so polyandrous condition we use for free stamen in which stamen they are free now the second type is fused stamen fused stamen now the question is in mind that what is exactly fused you see that there is the bilobed structure and this is the filament now there are the chances that these lobes are fused right and these filaments are free or there are chances that these filaments they are attached and these lobes are free so and third there are chances that everything is fused lobes are also fused and filaments are also fused so on the basis of the point of attachment that what is fused actually the fused stamens they are of three main types in one in first type we will first uh, talk in detail that is the when filaments they are fused and anthers they are free only filaments they are fused here this condition जब आप फिलामेंट्स को फ्यूज कर रहे हो दैट कंडीशन इज नोन एज एडल्फस कंडीशन अब जरूरी नहीं है कि ओनली वन बंडल कैन बी ऑब्जर्व देयर आफ्टर फिलामेंट्स ज्वाइनिंग देन देयर कैन बी टू डिफरेंट बंडल्स कैन बी ऑब्जर्व और समटाइम देयर कैन बी मोर देन थ्री बंडल्स सो आफ्टर फ्यूजन हाउ मेनी बंडल्स देयर हैज बीन फॉर्म्ड after fusion of filaments how many bundles you can observe on the basis of that we have three types of uh, three types of conditions one is monoadelphous one is diadelphous and another one is polyadelphous adelphous is what it is uh, in which filaments are fused and anthers they are free monoadelphal means all the filaments fuse to form a single bunch or single bundle and it is a characteristic feature of malvasi family as you can see in this picture all the filaments these these are the filaments they join to form a single tube like structure this is the single tube and this is known as our this tube is known as our staminal tube so in china rose what do you observe that there is this tube which is known as stem staminal tube which is formed by the fusion of the filaments and on this staminal fluid there are the free anthers anthers are free so when all the filaments they join together and form a single bundle it is known as monoadelphous in diadelphous when stamens they are fused into two bundles it is seen in papilionaceae family as you can see this is a one filament and there is the another separate one now here on this nine anthers nine filaments actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 Seven, eight, nine filaments. Actually, here nine filaments fuse to form one bundle, and one bundle is 
right if you look at this so here just you look that one two three four five six seven eight nine so these nine filaments they fuse to form one bundle and one complete stamen is differently placed so this is called nine plus one arrangement and this is called two bundles so diadolphus condition this is the diadolphus condition after this polyadolphus now stamens they are fused into more than two bundles means as you can see one two bundle three four bundle so more than three bundle that condition is known as polyadolphus and it is a characteristic feature of lemon it is characteristic feature of citrus plants castor so monoadolphus diadolphus and polyadolphus and in these filaments are only fused anthers are free when anthers are fused now when your anthers these are fused and filaments they are free this condition is known as syngenaceous syngenaceous g e n a s i o u s syngenaceous condition or synanthrus it is a characteristic feature of asteraceae family to which sunflower belong as you can see syngenaceous anther lobes they are attached so lobes are attached but filaments they are free so this kind of condition is known as syngenaceous condition the third one and synanthrus bhi bolte hai kyunki anthers fused hai anthers and filaments both are produced and anther or filament dono milke kya banayenge androsium so this is called synanthrus anthrus is for androsium and syn means fused and it is seen in cucurbitaceae family like this question that it is given here in which of the following flowers syn androsium condition is found sunflower no in sunflower we can find our syn anthrus right syn anthrus in p no in p it there is not uh, uh, this uh, syn anthrus condition then there is our lemon no in the lemon is also there is syn um, not syn anthrus condition it is the god cucurbitaceae family in which syn anthrus condition is observed so in this way you can solve these kinds of questions so what did we discuss today we talked about estivation as well as we talked about complete structure of androsium and its types right and next we will talk about gynosium in complete detail